Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before I get started, as always, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, Wahawakwadash, with Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, that's whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, it's his true name, and the Rakhakwadash, that is the Holy Spirit. And I also want to give double honors to the apostles. And the elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well in the scriptures. And salutations to all the brothers out there who are pushing his word in all truth and in all sincerity. And I want to do a skillful adding to the elder Yashwamba's video, which is entitled, Did Abraham Pray for the Alphabet Community? And, you know, he basically um, did a lesson that was correcting this statement that was made by the I IUIC. And I'll say this real quick. These members of IUIC, they're not really um, learned, okay? You know, these guys don't know the scriptures, all right? You know, time, you know, in time we see them, you know, butcher the scriptures, all right? And they, uh, they just go uh, completely off, all right? And, um... You know, that's one thing. Or the other thing is, you know, this is a possibility. Uh, you know, I can't confirm or deny it, but, you know, just to throw it out there, because these guys are very suspicious, all right? I'll say it like that. They could, they, they, they could have been, um, they could have sold out, all right? And now, you know, they're being told to say particular things, all right? But... Either way, I'll say this: We, as the uh, true men of the of Yahweh Bashim Shai, the true prophets, you know, we gotta you know defend the gospel. All right, we must defend the gospel, and we must you know bring out the true, you know, meaning of these scriptures. All right, and you know, I'll say this: you know, first and foremost. Abraham didn't pray, all right, for these sodomites, all right? He didn't pray for these sodomites, okay? The reason why he prayed for, for, for uh, 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 Sodom, okay, as the scripture said there in that second Ezra, was because his nephew, Lot, was dwelling in Sodom, okay? Which made him basically a resident, okay? Like us, all right, that are in America, right? We're technically Israelites, but we're citizens of America, all right? You see? That doesn't mean that we're, you know, Americans, as in, you know, that's our nationality. That's who we are. You see? All right? You know, and even uh, the elder Yashawamba uh, went into it when he went into uh, the word sodomite. One of the definitions was literally a resident or a citizen of Sodom. That's all it was. Okay? But point being though is Abraham wasn't praying for these Sodomites. He was praying for those that were righteous in that land. And in particular, it was uh, his nephew cuz he you know he knew his nephew was living there. Okay? Cuz the Lord told him that he was going to destroy Sodom. Okay? Now let's get a couple of scriptures, but I want to start off with this. All right, I want to start off with John seventeen and nine and nine real quick, okay? Because this is what Yahweh Shai said. All right, and you got to remember, nothing changes with Yahweh Shai or his prophets. Okay, 
You see? Uh, we, we still got the same mind frame a, a, as we did in the past. Because everybody, you know, falls into their lot. You know? There's a thing called reincarnation. All right? You see? If you're righteous then, you know, uh, 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 you know, in the ancient world, you'll be righteous now. Okay? But let me get this. This is John 17 and 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Main point is, Yahweh Shai said this, I pray, I pray for them, meaning the elect, okay, the righteous ones. He didn't pray for everybody, okay? And with that being said, that's basically what our forefather Abraham did. He didn't pray for everybody. He was praying for the righteous. And it's going to explain that in the book of Genesis. Okay, which we're going to get in a moment. It literally states that. You know? He, 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 he asked the Lord, are you going to destroy it if there's, you know, you know, I forgot exactly. You know, like I said, we're going to get it in a moment. I know he said like 50, you know, like 20, 10, you know. Are you going to destroy it if there's, you know, that many righteous in there? You see? That's what he was focused on. Not, not the, 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 the wicked ones. He wasn't worried about that. He was worried about those that were actually trying to do right. Who were trying to follow the Lord. Okay? Now let's get, um, let's get Genesis uh, 18. Alright? We're going to read a little bit. Because we got to get it. Because, see, those guys at IUIC, they don't know what the hell is going on, man. All right? They don't know what the hell is going on. And that's because they're uh, starting with a, their leader on down to, the, you know, their, their bishops and deacons. Who, you know, how, uh, however the ranking system goes. They're all, the, you know, the, they don't teach the correct doctrine. You know? They're all over the place. They're more worried about, you know, uh, marriages and... And, 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 and having parties at the Passovers. You know what I'm saying? Family, etc. That's what they're worried about instead of really getting down, you know, with these scriptures. Alright? But let's get this. This is Genesis 18 and 20. And the Lord Yahweh said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now. And see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? You see, that's what he was worried about. The righteous. That's it. Nothing else. The righteous. Pre-adventure, there be 50 righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? That be from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee? Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous with it, within the city, then I will spare all the place. Uh, I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, I now have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Preadventure there shall lack five, five of the fifty. Will thou destroy all the city for the lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty. And five, I will not destroy it. And he said, and he spake unto him yet again, and said, Preadventure, there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Preadventure, there shall thirty be found. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold, now I have taken Upon me to speak unto the Lord. Preadventure, there shall be twenty found there. And he said, 
I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Preadventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord Yahweh went his way as soon as he had left commun communing with Abra Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. You see, Abraham was worried about the righteous. And like I said, it's because his um, nephew, which, let me get this real quick. Because it talks about how uh, his, uh, uh, um, Abraham's nephew, Lot, was what? Righteous. Okay? That's in 2 Peter. Let's get, uh, I believe it's 2 Peter. What is that, 2 Peter 2? Yep. I, I just want to make a point to show that he was a righteous man. Okay? This is uh, 2 Peter Chapter 2, verse 7. And deliver just lie, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And let me keep reading. And it says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to, to be punished. All right, and you see, right there is show that Lot, which is Abraham, uh, Abraham's nephew, okay, was righteous, and the Lord knows how to de deliver the godly out of temptations, how to save them, and that's what the Lord did to a uh, 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 Lot. Yes, Sodom and Gomorrah, and the you know the three other cities were completely destroyed, but He saved Lot. Okay, that's known. That's in the scriptures. Okay. You know, he was saved. His two daughters and his and his wife would have been saved, but she decided to turn back, and and she turned into a pillar of salt. And that's because instead of looking forward and you know moving on, she she wanted to uh, you know you know live there. She 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 wanted that 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 type of lifestyle, you know. So the Lord punished her. You see, but uh, let me get this now just to prove that um, Lot was living in that land. OK, this is Genesis chapter 13, verse 12. And it reads here. This is straight to the point. Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. OK, you see. Oh, let me just keep reading. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. You see, a Lot was righteous. He just ended up dwelling in that, in that wicked land. Okay? That wicked place. Because <coughs> you got to remember, during this time period, you know, Sodom, Gomorrah, and those other three cities, you know, those five cities in total, were basically, you know, uh, the kingdom of that time, you know what I'm saying? You know, those were major cities where you can make money, all right? You know, you can, you know, live, have protection, so to speak, all right? Because, you know, they, 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 they had a whole system there. Got to remember, that these were literal, you know, cities. And then, you know, they, they, you, know you got you, you to gotta envision this in your head. They had police, they had, you know, a water system, they had food there, so on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? So that's why a lot went there. All right? And I'll say this, it's like us. We're, 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 we're the righteous living in the wicked land. You know, we got to live here. It is what it is. You know? You know, we, we, we get our daily bread, you know, here. We have, you know, our, our, our houses, our apartments, you know. It, you know, here, we just got to, you know, deal with this until the Lord decides to judge this place and then save, the, you know, his, his righteous elect. Okay? And just to add a point, excuse me, the Lord, he always saved, you know, his, his elect, the righteous, from destruction. Okay? You see? But let me get a couple of uh, uh, precepts here and we'll end it out. We got three more. Let's get Amos 5 and 15. 
<coughs> excuse me. Those guys at IUIC are bugged out, man. They're really bugged out. They don't know what the hell is going on. You know, and then and, and I'll say this. Those guys are going to get punished for that. Even if they're ignorant about, you know, their teachings. You know, they will get punished for this because you, 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 there's no pr a private interpretation. You know, there's only one true doctrine. And I'll say this. These guys can watch all these GMS videos, you know, starting with the apostles on down. They can be edified properly, but they choose not, you know, so they're going to get dealt with. And these guys know who we are. It's not a mystery. They know. But they decide to go, you know, into those, you know, organizations because it, it, it's lax there. All right, but that's a whole nother topic within itself. But let me get this. Amos 5, I'm going to start at 14, main points in 15 though. Amos 5 and 14. Seek good and not evil, that ye may live. And the Lord Yahweh, the power of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gates. You see, you're supposed to hate the evil and love the good. And best believe Abraham hated the evil, okay? He didn't pray, all right, for some sodomites doing wicked acts, you know, who, who, who are pedophiles and into bestiality, into cross-dressing, whatever they were doing back then, all right? Basically what they're doing now, you know? They were doing it back then as well. All right, maybe it wasn't as intense as it is, you know, in modern day, all right, but I'm telling you, it was bad out there, okay? That's why the Lord annihilated, that, you know, those cities, okay? You see? But it says here, hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord, Yahweh, the power of hosts, will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph, all right? And basically talking about the righteous elect. Okay, the Lord is always going to be a, a, a gracious unto them. And that's because they're trying to follow Yahweh Bashim al Shai to the best of their abilities. Okay? Let's get Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 and 9. Alright, this is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 9. Yeah, I'm going to get these two scriptures. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. They that put... Their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. So everything's about the elect. That's the reason why I'm bringing out these scriptures right now. It's always about the elect. And they were always obedient, you know? We, we don't care about the, the wicked. We don't care about them. We understand their, 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 their fall. Okay? Or why they're going to fall. And I best believe Abraham understood that as well. Okay? You see? Like I said, he, he, was, he was just worried about his nephew in particular. And also anyone else that was righteous in that, in, in that land. Which it just so happened that Lot was the only one that was righteous. All right. Since he was righteous, you know, his family was able to escape. In particular, his two daughters. You know, but his wife, like I said, she, you know, she, she didn't make it. She was able to escape the city, but then she, she, she got judged for being wicked and looking back. You see? But let me keep reading. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 10. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have... Neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord. Okay? You see though, the, those, the, 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 those that were in Sodom, they were wicked. They wanted to... Oh man, how would I word this? They wanted to take advantage, I'll say it like that, of two angels. They were fiending 
for two angels. Okay? And they wanted to take it by force. A gang of them, okay? No, I don't want to get too graphic. Think they, 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 you think uh, uh, Abraham was uh, uh, praying for, the, for them? Think about how... how yeah, like I said, just use extrapolation and just kind of think about it. You think these people... Uh, 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 I'll say it like this. You think that was the first time those people did the, uh, 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 that act? You know? Vile. Vile, man. But let's get to the last scripture here in uh, Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 25. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 25. And we'll read down a couple verses here. This is a Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 25. For she, which that's wisdom, is the breath of the power of the Most High. And a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of the Most High, and the image of His goodness. And being but one, she can do all things, and remaining in herself, she maketh all things new. And in all ages, entering into holy souls, she maketh them friends of the Most High and prophets. And you see, wisdom, okay, in all ages, entered into holy souls. You see? Which made, which makes, you know, that individual a friend of the Most High. That's why Abraham was called, you know, uh, the, the friend of, 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 of Yahweh. Okay? Because he had that wisdom. The Lord gave it to him. All right? And that trickled down to Lot. You see? Because you got to remember, Lot was under Abraham for some time. And you don't think that, you know, a Abraham was teaching him? You see? Let's keep reading. Verse 28. For the Most High loveth none but him that dwells with wisdom. Okay? And look, we have the same mind frame as our Creator. We're not trying to go against our Creator. All right? And if our Creator, all right, only loves those that dwell with wisdom, we feel the same. And trust me, Abraham felt the same. Okay? He wasn't down with all that wickedness. He wasn't down with it. All right? You see? But you know, that's pretty much the end of, you know, this lesson and uh, you know, hey, I, I suggest you watch the uh Elder Yashawamba's video. You know, um, I said I just wanted to do a little skillful adding. You know, I had my two cents, had a couple precepts. You know, that came to mind when I was listening to that video. And, and, you know, it's just, you know, these guys are just out of their goddamn minds, man. You know, and they're just all over the place. And they just, they just spew madness, man. You know? And I'll say this. There's nothing wrong with telling people to repent and to get right. Because that's what we all do. All right? You know, when we're teaching, we tell our people repent. for As the scriptures say, well, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I'll, I, hey, I'll say this because this is what the scriptures say. It talks about how, um, basically, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the Sodomites and the Gomorrahites, I'll say it like that, you know, how they, they, they can repent, all right, and get right. That, that, that's actually scripture, uh, a scriptural, that's in, um, I think in Corinthians, if I'm not mistaken, first or second Corinthians, it talks about that. So if you are a Sodomite, you know, or, you know, or, or a Gomorrahite, as I like to, you know, say, Right? You can repent. It's not it's not uh, impossible. You know? But I'll say this, I'm not praying for them. The Lord didn't tell me to pray for them. I'm only praying for the elect, man. That's it. Okay? I, like I said, our forefather, he, he, he was in that same spirit. He was only praying for the righteous. Which is basically the elect. Okay? Because there was always an elect. You know, in each time period. Okay? That hasn't changed. There's always been that remnant, that, 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 that righteous, you know, group that was always there to serve the Lord. You know? 
But, um, you know, I hope this was edifying. And, you know, um, I'm going to end this lesson. And with that, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashim al Shai. Also, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And salutations to all you brothers out there. Shalom.